Hey, distanced Brian here. Suburbs are everywhere. Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of City Skylines, and hopefully that intro caught your attention. Now if you didn't realize already, which I wouldn't be surprised, this episode is about suburbs. All I'll really do here is create a single suburb, but I'm going to show you all the steps that you can use to basically just rinse and repeat this process all the time throughout your city. This will let you create numerous suburbs, you can adjust it how you want but this is just how I do it. So to begin with, I try to create some sort of connection to the highway, obviously, and something I'm trying out here that I haven't tried before is this idea for a roundabout I had, which just directly stems from the highway itself, and there was a lot of stuff from Move It because of the short distances and how tight the whole thing was, but I'm pr it works well so far, so that's good. The next thing we have to do is create some sort of actual road that branches off from the highway. I, I try to use six lane roads because combined I have like three lanes from my highways. So I use six lane roads so the cars can directly merge onto there. And it works out pretty nicely. And also see that I immediately have trees on my boulevards, avenues, whatever you want to call them. Because suburbs do tend to have quite a bit of green space as well as walkability, bikeability, so this is why my next road over here does have bike lanes. I connect the two together and it gives me a nice skeleton to work with. This is basically a lot of recap from road layouts except it's more focused on suburbs rather than my downtown. Now you can see me changing the intersection here and the reason I wanted to do that was to begin with the whole curvability aspect of a suburb. If you haven't realized, a lot of suburbs tend to have curves. They are quite irregular, unlike a grid. Now I do still want some sort of public transport in my suburb, so I'm adding this tram road here. And the only other form of public transport that I'll have will be buses and taxis. I could add a commuter line, but I don't have any really viable connections to here. So I'm just going to add my high speed train line here. I'm going to have a connection somewhere there in the valley between the mountains. I don't think I ever showed it on camera, but it's, it's, it's really just a regular train line, just basically going at full speed with really wide spaces in between stops. Time to praise mods again. Here you go, I'm using precision engineering. I always use it, but I tend to use it a lot in the suburbs because there are so many curves that I want to get just right. So precision engineering becomes really, really helpful because it tells you all the angles, it's just really organized, really neat, extremely helpful. I also just added a temporarily segment of tram track here. I might want to extend my line here a little bit later. Not too sure yet, I'm pretty sure I delete that later on, but it was just to give me some sort of idea of what I want where, and I can't stress enough how important that is. If you don't know where you want to put something, put some sort of placeholder there, and then you can decide later where, whether or not you want to keep it there. At the end of my tram avenue, I'm adding this other tram road, which has four tram tracks, and it's really useful for 
like interchanges between two lines and that's exactly what's happening in my case i'm going to have two different tram lines terminating there now once again i had my main road here i had an idea of where i wanted to go and now i'm changing it so it's more curvy in suburbs like i was talking about roads tend to be curvier everything is a bit more irregular but they still tend to have this squareness to them where they have some sort of pattern or they're not completely irregular and you can see some sort of evenness the only ways i can describe it so while this is going on in the background i just want to say <laughs> whoever it was that said i'm boring you can't really can't really keep that anymore right <laughs> That intro should have kind of voided that, yeah. Sorry if that weirded some of you out, just, it was so fun to make, I spent so much time on it, which is why this is all so delayed. Um, but I still did keep my promise, I did still deliver a weekly video, it was just a really stupid PewDiePie one. <laughs> So now we're moving on to the smaller roads, and something that I noticed when looking at pictures of suburbs and Google Maps, all that kind of stuff, is that there tended to be these roads that were structured very similarly to these main roads, that had the same sort of idea to them, and you could tell because they were more straight, and more to the point, I guess, than the residential roads that most houses were on. and. They always seemed to be like three lanes. They had some sort of divider in the middle. So I tried to recreate that in my road planning. And you, when, you'll see what I mean later on, but you can really see the difference between these sort of main roads that are more straight rather than the ones like cul-de-sacs and stuff that houses are on. Okay, so roundabouts. I don't think I've stressed my point enough because I don't think I've used them enough in my city. Roundabouts are super important. If you ever have a traffic issue on any intersection, try roundabouts. They're extremely useful and that's why they're used so much in real life. I created one and it's working great. I didn't really have a need for one anywhere else, but I had that intersection there with the tram road and I just really wanted to try out a roundabout. And it's nice, sometimes it's the same thing with neighborhoods, they have random roundabouts here and there just to manage traffic, and that's exactly what I did. Another feature I noticed in suburbs were these like big loops with these sort of three-lane roads that I was kind of talking about, the two-lane roads with a divider. They usually branched out from a main road, but they did, and they came really close to another main road, but then they kind of just stopped there. Maybe that was just the suburb I was looking at, but I, I noticed that a lot, and so I tried to do that here too. It's still, it's still a main road, but it's this really, really large loop that it sort of does, and it kind of looks like a potato. <laughs> but then from there, sometimes there are streets that go inside some little cul-de-sacs, and sometimes it's just nothing in the middle, it's just park space. So. That's what I did. I left park space. They put a path down the middle eventually, I think. But it worked out fine. And when I, in the end, when I look at it and I compare it to the suburb that I was using as a reference, I think it looks really good. So if I really do recommend you guys do that in your suburbs too. Now, I know all of you are screaming at me at this point, but Brian, where are the cul-de-sacs? <laughs> and here they are. It's, I, 
I keep seeing pictures on Reddit of these perfectly formed cul-de-sacs and they're like wonderful, amazing. It's really nice. It's like the road and then it becomes this nice sort of realistic sort of cul-de-sac. Cul-de-sac's the only word. But I couldn't find a way to do that so I came up with my own solution. Basically what I did, I took this tiny alleyway road and I just created a small circle with it. I'm sorry, I know you guys are probably also disappointed in me. You're like, how dare you, Brian? How, like, how could you do this? And you know what? I'm sorry, <laughs> but this works. When I look at it, I like how it looks. I think it still holds some sort of realism because there are cul-de-sacs out there like this. It's like in the center, they have something. And that's, that's, that is what I did. And in the end, I put some sort of filler in inside like trees or some sort of playground, which I'll get to that later. I have a whole segment on that. And yeah, it's really just a road with a circle at the end. And when you take all the steps that I showed you and put them together, this is sort of the layout that you get. And I think it looks pretty nice. So here you can see the same layout, except with a few added smaller roads and pathways. Please ignore my erratic waving of the district tool, just looking at where I may put the high speed line. I don't even put it there after all, so I don't know what I was doing. And right away I get into placing buildings. For the buildings I chose UK buildings because the American ones out there didn't suit the way I wanted it to look. And there was so many different ones because there's detached, semi-detached, so many different kinds and there were also Rico options so I chose that. And I don't remember exactly by who they're from, but if you just search up UK buildings and sort it by popularity, you'll find them immediately. And they're really nice. So I decided to go with them. I would have chosen American Eclectic, but it has this weird gravel texture everywhere and it makes it look like a wasteland. So I decided just to try a different theme this time. But you do what you wanna do. It's, it's still gonna look fine. <laughs> I was talking about walkability and here you can see some more of that. I left some space for paths and now I'm just putting them in. It's really nice to have them in between houses and it's also pretty realistic. The backyards aren't always huge so they won't always expand to the next house. So it's always good to have some sort of paths and my citizens do use them. Citizens do like to go for walks and it works. I also don't like the trees and props in these buildings so I decided to remove them and I chose the generic trees and bushes and it looks so much nicer and I also removed a few props um, from a lot of the houses you'll see I actually removed a ton of them I mainly flower pots I don't know I guess I have some sort of grunge against flower pots that I never knew about the next step was just to get onto simple zoning. I don't know if I showed it, but I already did put in my water pipes. I'll add electricity later. I didn't show that, I don't think I did show that because it's something I've already showed before and I don't think it needs showing. All I'm doing is I'm zoning. I'm trying to keep it in even service squares. And as soon as I press play, buildings start spawning because there's a pretty high demand for residential. Again, you can see me using prop it up to change the trees. Specifically, the trees I chose was this generic tree, usually full small. And I think it was regular bush green, something like that. It was like a medium sized bush, but I like way better how they look. They look more realistic and the colors are darker. Unlike these ugly cartoonish, I don't know, bushes and everything that we have from the vanilla game. Okay, so I'm going to take the opportunity during this tree placing montage to let you guys pick the next episode because I've been noticing different episodes are getting different amounts of interests. So here are your choices. There's either a tourist or leisure center, which is like a whole bunch of casinos, fancy shopping buildings, a port. Really cool in my opinion. There's It's going to be coastal and it's going to be near the downtown. There's a lot to it. And there's either a shopping center, which is like a mall. It's 
in my opinion, kind of boring. It's just merging buildings together and then a huge parking lot. There's a detailing episode, which is exactly what it is. I'm just going to detail a whole bunch of stuff and show you guys how I detail. Or a specialized industry episode, which is like farming, forestry, that kind of stuff. Pretty interesting, I think. But yeah, you guys decide by clicking the eye in the top right corner if it doesn't pop out and voting. Just to add a little bit of color, I did place down a few fall trees, like red, orange, yellow, and I think they do bring some sort of more realism to it. It looks a bit nicer, not as plain as just live oak trees. I mentioned playgrounds earlier in the episode, and this is kind of what I meant. It's a nice rural playground, it's wooden. Here I have it, sort of concrete, but it doesn't have to be. It's it's a wooden one, so generally you'd have wood chips underneath, but I couldn't find any wood chip decal things on the workshop, so I just went with concrete and I placed down these colored circles, which I actually see a lot of. They're like these kind of rubber texture. And I placed down a few of these playgrounds and I then detailed them later. But if in a suburb, there's always going to be a ton of playgrounds, so you should add playgrounds too. And there you go, our first suburb is done. And although pretty simple, you can take these these steps, you can repeat them a ton of times and get yourself a whole bunch of really nice looking suburbs. If you guys like this video, leave a like and comment down below to tell me what you liked about it the most. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike and t tell me what you didn't like in the comments. I do read all the comments and I try to incorporate all your criticisms or positive feedback into my next episodes. And if you want to see more of this, then why don't you subscribe? I do try to post weekly, but I can't guarantee it. I do sometimes have things I need to take care of. But if you want to be notified next time I make an episode, hit the bell icon and it will probably let you know. I don't know. YouTube's been acting up lately. So yeah, see you next time, guys.